I will focus, they say, don't waste the waste. That's the most important thing that a country like Sweden or Norway, which are so well off, still think waste as a resource and not waste. I was staying there for a long time and I said, actually they had an incinerator plant in 1986 and their main waste segregation or waste management actually started in 2005 and 6. Uh, so we started in India in 1999 and we didn't succeed. I think the, uh, one of the reasons what I found uh, when I was discussing was that they had their processing plants in place uh, before they started segregation. I think that is one factor which is very important. Because unless there is something that, because people feel it is going mixed, there was, they created a market for segregated waste. And I think that's one thing which I saw. Then uh, a lot of importance was given to the waste hierarchy. This is what uh, most of the European countries are doing is. This is the focus. Waste handling must be proactive and value creating. That is what they talked about and disposal should be less as much as possible that was their aim and how did they start they basically started with segregation of hazardous waste uh, initially in uh, 2004 and 5 and then later on moved to other uh, segregation of two and after 205 they started wet and dry wet is completely banded since 2005 on the dumping side no wet waste or combustible waste can go to the dumping sites Generally, the treatment methods are, first is the material recycling. As much as possible, they try to recover tires, uh, paper, everything that is dry, whatever is possible, that is put separately in each household, the commercial waste and the producers. Biological waste goes to the biogas or biofuel project. Energy, waste to energy is one of the methods. And last is the landfill site. How was waste management organized and basically it was every city had its own sanitation plan in place first and then they discussed and this sanitation plan was done by the corporation but with the help of stake different stakeholders especially the producers and the business houses which were very important and a key which played a very important and a key role then uh, there were many uh, collection was done by municipality and as well as private contractors uh, for example, tires, papers was differently, uh, there were contracts allotted differently who would come and collect it after every 10 days or 5 days depending upon the collection and the volume. And this was from 8 to 10 days. Uh, all waste is collected on the same day by different uh, contractors. Many a times, three waste containers uh, with different color bags are put into the same container are taken together but they are mechanically separated because there is color coding of the bag. So it is mechanically segregated at the site. So pe though it takes it together on the machine belt, it is mechanically coded or decoded according to the color of the bag. So collection is only once in a week or in 10 days. The other important factor was land uh, fill tax on incineration tax. Both were introduced. Uh, that is what even corporation is also thinking. Every Every household has to pay a tax that started from 200 kronos, which has gone up to 450 kronos now. In 2000, one krono is around 10 rupees. Uh, so it started with 200 kronos in 200, 2000, and now uh, in 2005, it was 450 kronos. The more your waste, the, the, the tax was very high. So naturally, people tend to reduce their waste by giving it to different recyclers. Average fee was also again 1254. This is from uh, Sweden I've taken, Sweden Kronos. This was an average fee of one family of four members, three members, accordingly they charge. Waste management cost was 1460 Kronos per year per, per person. Per person, for a year, the entire year. So, uh, and most of these uh, systems are operated Whatever is spent on the waste management is recovered from the people who are generating the waste. So it is, it is, they try to balance it as much as possible. And waste is not to be wasted is their major principle. 
this is one of the uh, landfill site uh, where I found it uh, to be very interesting. I'll, I'll show you this picture. You have different uh, people, like you have people uh, collecting wet waste separately. You have people collecting, it's one man li landfill site. And people collecting different glass, metal, scrap, cardboard, all different people. These are different uh, people who are collecting different material. You want to? I, yeah, yeah. This is actual picture of that site. Uh, one minute, I'll go back. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll just. This is that picture. This is the picture where you have different people collecting. Uh, this is plastic. This is cardboard. So different people collect different things. And the main center is there. There are two entry points. This is in one dumping ground. This is the actual photograph of this. This is that picture which you saw. And these are the two incinerators. One which was in 86 and the one which is in 205. So these two, and you don't get any order. You don't get any smell. I didn't feel anything. I didn't feel that I was in a dumping site unless I saw the waste over there. And that two packed very well, decently done. And I think all the other are private contractors. The incineration is done by the corporation. The plant is run by the corporation with a pri private contractor. Most of the other things are done by the private contractors. Recycling of paper, glass, paper, metal, everything is done by, and it is producers extended responsibility. So they have people, I think that plays a very important, they don't pick up waste, which is the responsibility of the producer. They only give them the space, maybe the machinery, what they want. Like every mall has a place or a machine, which I'll show you later on where you can put in the product and you get a coupon. Like the waste pickers, trash pickers, go there, put it. If they put in 10 bottles, maybe they get 10 kronos coupon. They go and buy whatever they want in the mall. So that is immediately, there is no NGO. There is nothing like that. It is, you work, the more you work, the more you get paid. And that's how the waste is going for recycling. And all these pl plants are put by the uh, producers. Most of the plants are put by the producers. This is the result of uh, uh, Sweden. 75% uh, was the goal. They achieved 91%. These are the figures of what I only didn't get much of the figures about the electronic big machines. That is the refrigerator and uh, other products which have mercury and some hazardous which I think they are exporting, uh, which is not told to me. That information didn't come to me. Yeah. This is what they have. Uh, this is what they have achieved. 13% uh, of biodegradable of the wet waste is converted into biogas or biofuel. 37% is recovered. All the dry waste is recycled. Material is recycled and recovered. One person only goes to the dumping site, and 48% goes to the incineration plant, which is mixed soiled. Yeah. This is the composition of waste that is recycled. This is the composition of one town. I've taken an example of one town in most of the towns. Mal Malmon is the city where I've taken this composition. Most of the towns have this. Yeah, in that particular town. But in most of the town, the composition is same. It may be one or two person. That's all, not more than that. How much? And that's how they are processing it. And only the hazardous waste. Incineration is mixed, which is marshy or mixed, soiled, uh, then paper wrapping, biscuit wrappings, uh, which really don't uh, have a different, uh, there is a different market. So they put into that. Or the shampoo bottles, which are not washed. Uh, so those things, they put it into incinerator plant, which goes into incineration plant. Yes, uh, and mostly hotel and residential, uh, where they find uh, uh, that this is coming purely to a large extent, that's where they are putting into. These are what, this, are, this is what they are going, uh, what they end up with. This is the present status of waste. If you see, if you see here, 
these are the countries and Norway and Sweden is just one or two. Norway is around five, five to six percent. The entire Norway city, but there are different towns which have one or two percent also. But the highest is Sweden, and then you have Denmark, which these are the countries which have only one or two percent of waste going to the dumping ground. This is uh, from the European Union's uh, report that I've taken. This is what I've given for Mumbai. What is the per capita generation in uh, Sweden? This is in Norway, this is in India. Uh, these are the figures which I've put about, uh, like in Norway, 1 to 2 percent goes to the landfill side in uh, Sweden. In Norway, it's about four, 5 percent. Still, segregation is not to a large extent happening in Norway. These are vehicle, uh, we'll finish uh, the present. These are the vehicles and they are very clearly branded the vehicles. This is the BMC vehicle or the corporation's vehicle, the municipality, and these are the private contractor's vehicle. So you know that these two vehicles have come and picked up the, the, the waste. And they're all standardized all over. Uh, uh, what I found uh, interesting factor is why is that they have achieved so much of segregation and why we have to, because for me that was one important clue and I think I found out it when I went to the municipality in Oslo, I found out children from nursery and second standard coming there where the municipality conducts classes uh, for students where a lot of, I think I have put a picture one minute, I'll just go, yeah, this is the picture. Here uh, there are different boxes, wet, dry, glass, the child puts in and all the things are put on the table, the child goes and puts everything into it. When he puts up all this he gets a star or a chocolate or, you know, at the end the child knows oh, I've done it perfectly. If there is wrong, then he goes again, he sees it and then he's again allowed to do it. And this is done every year four times for one class. And that is done in that particular municipality. And I, this goes up till the 10th standard. The, 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 the activities change. But I think this is very important because it starts from the primary school till the 10th standard. In 7th and 8th standard, uh, they have something in writing where they find out that uh, a student child, oh, my parents are not doing it. So, or it indirectly comes in his article that my parents are not very uh, environment conscious and uh, we need to have more parents within. So there are things. So then they can, like we have the section Joe, they report that to the section Joe that you please follow up in this particular apartment or what and that's how it is done. And I think that's one of the reasons, I think it's rigorous follow-up. Fining is very common. Uh, uh, of course, it's a very polite way of doing because people are also polite there. Uh, if they say you don't pay, that they have to pay it. And they say, okay, you have not paid in time, this is what you have to pay extra and people pay. Uh, they have a major problem with immigrants. What we say is like the slum, they have a huge population of immigrants and immigrants is where they have a problem. How do you teach them segregation and how do you... F but they have one thing that they give up allowance to each immigrant family. So if they don't segregate or if they don't know the Norwegian language, then they don't get paid for it. Simple. One year you're given free or you're given at a standard, but if you don't segregate, if you don't speak Norwegian language and if you do not know the basic two levels of Norwegian language, you cannot get the benefit of that allowance, unemployment allowance or youth allowance. That, and I think that is one way of curbing things and people do it very sincerely. Here is a picture of a child, a father telling, uh, child, father showing the child to put things like shoes and clothes, old clothes. They have different they have given a lot of importance to IEC material. Like I saw IEC material in Urdu because there are people from Pakistan over there. So they give it to every household has the list what they are supposed to give. The bags and the containers come from the municipality. So they are stand. Information and education material is all the pub publicity material, whatever is there, it is available in any language that you want, it is there. Even in Urdu, which was shocking to me, it was in Urdu because there are uh, people from Pakistan and uh, Iran and uh, so they had material for them also. And I think that is very important. They have small story books. These are small story books on waste. The child can take it if, and go and read it. Small stories and uh, like how many buses are working in your, there is a questionnaire. How many buses are running on the biogas? Like he's told in the class and then he fills in and sends it back to the corporation.
So I think a lot of importance is given to the IC material. Every house has the information about what the corporation is, when the vehicle is going to come, what is the day, what are the color bags, what are the segregation methods, if they have, whom do they contact if they don't understand anything, whom do they contact if the vehicle does not come. This is again a, a success factor, I think policies is uh, very important. They have given a lot of importance to environment. And all the rules and regulations are formed by the municipal corporations. Public service uh, as a holistic system. They are saying that cooperation within the department, like the sludge, which goes to the, the biogas project, or the biogas or bioenergy project, the sludge, the sewerage operation department, and urban planning department coordinates most of these activities. There is a good cooperation between different, uh, uh, different partners. Clear division and role, what a producer does, what a municipality uh, does, and what the citizens do, it's very clearly written down and it's available with every person. I think that's uh, importance is given to source segregation. And this has increased to a large extent, I think, uh, if they find that there is no segregation happening at source, they immediately take an action and it is indicated by machine or by manually. Most of the time it is by the machine that segregation is not happening. These are the different types of uh, infrastructure, uh, like this is a stand which is metal where you can dump in things. You don't know where to dump shoes or you don't know where to dump clothes. Uh, you don't know where to dump things, uh, for example, maybe a uh, mat, plastic mat. So they have different, uh, this is sh uh, shirts, shoes, uh, mats. So these things can be put in, these are open spaces. Uh, they are generally available between 300 to 500 meters. All over the city you see this. And they are very clean and well maintained because we don't see anyone spitting there. This is what I said. Uh, this is a room, a municipality room in the municipality where all the posters and all information is there. This is what I had explained to you all. These are, uh, now I'll be talking about lesson, but these are the machines where you feed in your pet bottles or glass bottles, metal cans, and you get money over here or a coupon, either money or coupon. Most of the time it's coupon because they are in the malls. And that person directly goes and buys whatever he wants in the mall. He can accumulate co coupons. Like I, I talked to one of the thrash speaker and I said, I want to see your house. And uh, he had got the house from the government quota. And he said, I said, what do you do? So I thought he had almost everything in the house. He said, I want to buy new furniture. So how would I? He said, I go to a flea market over there. And then he can give this co coupons. Or he can go with this. There is a social worker who comes with him. And it, what, whatever additional is required is given and then he can buy that furniture. I mean, this is the way uh, they accumulate points and they can go and buy things. But these machines are there almost every mall, railway stations, many places. So uh, they don't have to go and wait for someone give me the money. So I think this is, this is something which I really liked it. And all the companies, uh, pet bottle, shoe rack, all them have put different machines like that. Okay, now... Uh, I said a waste is treated as a resource. They see waste as a resource and how it is not going to uh, have a bad impact on the environment. Segregation is given highest importance and implemented in phase. It's not like one day you come and start segregation all in three compartments. They started with hazardous waste, then wet, they went to wet and dry and now they're putting plastic separately. Commercial waste collected privately or by the producer. Commercial waste is mostly picked up by private producers, uh, the, the companies which are being appointed. It is not by the municipality. Municipality authorizes people to collect it. I see an awareness is given a lot of infrastructure is provided. Infrastructure include bins, bag, whatever infrastructure is required is provided by the municipality and it is mostly standard. Like you see all of the same color, same design. Private partners play a very important role, and fee are charged for the waste. Incentives for reduction of waste, uh, on an average, if uh, it, it means that, uh, for example, tire person will come and collect his tires. He do, doesn't have to tell that you have to do, and he gives locations where you can go and dump the tires. I will show you the picture. I think I have it over there. 
same thing is for uh, for example pet bottles glass tin extenders producers responsibility is strongly implemented by uh, both the Sweden and when as no, the Norway government and I think that is very important because everyone is responsible to take back his the bulbs for example there is a machine you go and put in your bulbs or your tube lights it's taken away by that company on its own so the more you reduce the less your weight is and that's how you'll be charged less what money no, there is no money. There is no money. No one is paid for their waste. We are lucky that our raddi paper ka paisa milta hai hamko. Hamko dabbe ka paisa milta hai, dood ka thaili ka paisa milta hai. But there, there is no money. People pay for waste collection. A competition among the contractors. I think this is something which I found very interesting. Like for example, we have one contractor who will put litter bins all over. And maybe he has got so much of work that he is not in a position to do it. There, if you don't do it in one day, there is another contractor waitlisted who immediately does it. If he doesn't do, there is a third contractor doing the same job. And I think this competition is what we nearly need to uh, cope up, that we generally give the contract for entire city and then we don't know what to do because there is no one at the second level or the third level. This was something that is, uh, which was very interesting. Waste as a business model, most of the time uh, it is a business model unless there is profit, uh, no one looks into it. Standardization of vehicle, municipal and private services providers. I mean, who does what, what type of vehicle is branded? There is a branding of vehicle, there is branding of equipment, so you know which is private, which is municipality, which is uh, producer's uh, responsibility vehicle, so you know exactly which vehicles are coming and picking up. Integrated approach, large garden, all departments put their waste accordingly. It's not like, okay, garden department is different, so he will look into the sludge is different. So he, so all finally, whatever is decided by the solid waste management department is the responsibility of them to see that all that comes together. So I think that is and politic, uh, political proactive role and will. I think that's very strong. I, I met the environment ministry over there and I was shocked because he looked so simple. He came by a bus. Uh, many villages, uh, they, have, uh, they have gone to Sweden, some smaller villages where they have zero waste. I met a Green Party uh, minister who was showing me his toilet, where eco-friendly toilet, which he was converting uh, the grey waste into compost. And I, I think I really thought that can our, uh, our minister ever show such a thing? Because he going it, actually opening the bin and showing you the compost. That I mean, that was something shocking. A minister doing this was something for a lot of grey. Uh, they have places where they shred in all the kitchen waste, which goes directly. These are in uh, rural areas or smaller towns, where they shred the kitchen waste directly into their kitchen sink. That goes to a sewage tank and a green waste tank. Sewage and that waste goes together, put into a biogas plant, and then that there they have community cooking, they have breakfast in the morning, extra is used for energy. So they even there are places even in Sweden where they have shortage of good water. So they are having desalination plant of uh, over there and that is also eco-friendly so they have biogas they have solar one volvo village it's called the volvo village if you see there it's there and it is shocking to see how people do it very committedly these are uh, some of the publicity material that they have put in this is what a uh, different type this is battery i like this very much like uh, on the way it's there is a battery box you can go and throw your batteries once it's full there is an indicator or the man just checks it and picks up the batteries. Same is for syringes. I do that in my house. Powder ka dabbe ke and the syringe dalti hu. Once it is full, I give it to the hospital. I think this is something very simple. Uh, and I think we should have something like that for the palmwalas. Hamare jo cigarette ke tukde feke jate. So this is, in the pro this is what they have been doing it over there. Again, uh, a lot of buses uh, are uh, run on the biofuel that has been uh, used or being uh, converted the wet waste is converted into biofuel so a lot of buses you see call them called green buses all over all over sweden even in norway in a lot of cities you see this biofuel they they, they write on that biogas uh, biofuel buses buses yeah so and uh, this is the percentage actually it's too small uh, 
almost uh, almost 16 percent is the biogas of the total transport 16 percent is the biogas uh, buses and they are increasing day by day i think uh, there were more than 600 buses in uh, sweden now it's uh, last year and now it's going they have not tabulated but it will be more than that same thing is in uh, this is again in sweden 16 percent of the total public transport is on biogas these are some of the pictures these are all cardboards uh, they have a typical color and a bag where all the cardboard comes together and that is all the cardboard industry and the card cardboard producers put together this is like tires all tires come you dump it when it is filled the company comes and picks it up what we can do i personally feel i as i say i am from municipality i have worked and i i think i have learned a lot from the municipality i think we really need to have an apex body for cleanliness and sanitation of mumbai apex body is a body which will have powers not just a body which has no powers because we have multiple authorities uh, we have the army we have the navy mada mmrda bpt state government railway and when we want to do something they will say we don't want to do it or we can't do it i think this is something we really need to work in the city of mumbai 55 percent of the land in mumbai is owned by private people only 19 percent of land is owned by bmc i do not know how many of them really know about it 28 percent is owned by the state government so if this is the state we really can do anything on our land you see uh, and this i found out when i did the slum sanitation program we have ample of money for toilets for example in the city of mumbai but nocs don't come in for highway we have been struggling with mmrda for uh, railways we never got salt pan land there is a huge slum over there but we cannot provide toilets so if you want this apex body should have the power to decide with one month notice to any authority this is something that you either do it or let us do it there should be some and i think this power or this should have a minister for cleanliness and sanitation according to me who will look into these issues day to day and we really need to concentrate if this authority or apex body comes in i think mumbai will be a better place to live i think we y'all do not know like uh, coastal area is not our responsibility but we are cleaning the beaches uh, Miti River is not our responsibility, we are cleaning it. Responsibility is we are investing a lot of money. People feel the budget is increasing, but there are many things where there is no returns. BPT land, we are picking up the waste, whether you like it or not, one IS officer will tell the other IS officer, please pick it up and then they do it. If the senior comes or junior comes, they have to follow it. I think these are the things which, and this is citizens' money, finally it is our money. And I think we need to have this body, I think, for anything in Mumbai, this body decides. You you decide who comes on that what but this body should also have power to decide yes if you don't do it we will do it for example railways cleaning is their job bringing it out and doing is our job but that has to be done regularly and if we say that all railway toilets need to be upgraded we give them one month's time either you do it or either we do it and we will charge for it so i think this is something that is lacking in the city of mumbai throughout my career i am seeing that many a times permissions don't come in then within our department, sewerage disposal department will not give uh, permission to solid waste management department. Solid waste management department will not give permission to the garden department. So I think if this body is there in existing, maybe under the CM, I do not know whom. But this body should have power and we need to have something like that. A lot of IEC material uh, needs to be generated in multiple languages. And it has to be not for one year. We did it for, I think, four or five years back, and then we stopped. We did it for one year, we stopped. It should be continuously for 10 years. Then only you will see results. You can't see the results in one or two years. Uh, prohibiting organic waste on landfill side. I think that should be first stopped. We should not send our organic waste. At the same time, we need to give incentive for producers to recover and recycle waste. Uh, providing infrastructures like litter bins, community bins. It's, it's, it's after, there has to be a standard. Every 300 meters to 500 meters, there should be a community bin or there should be a litter bin. If there is house stores collection, then you don't have to have a community bin, but you need to have a litter bin. So that has to be, a, there has to be some standard. After how much of distance there is going to be a litter bin. Compulsion on segregation of waste, and especially we should start with commercial houses. I think we can easily target them and then move to say, uh, the 
the, uh, the non-commercial areas. Publication of reports at ward level. Every month there should be a report because I think that's one thing. If they find there is no progress, people immediately write to the head or the, the department. So I think this is, this is very important that as a corporation, uh, standardization of litter bins, community bins, banners, posters. I saw a very interesting thing that all the advertisement, there is a particular standard of, there is an aluminum frame which is again from recycled aluminum frame, which is standard. There are sizes which are on the railways, on the bus stop. They cannot be beyond that or they cannot be low, below that. So anyone who wants to do an advertisement will have to put his advertisement within that frame. And it is so easy. It's on clamp. You can remove it. The one who puts it will remove the first person's advertisement and give it to the paper recycler. That's his responsibility. I think that is making the city look very similar there are similar boards similar and they are very simple i found them i just i said i let me try it it was very simple and there is a they write for this much of duration they advertise so these are common for railways they have a different every railway station had a disaster management plan displayed at the door prominently if there is a disaster where do you go because most of them are underground or the metros are underground First thing that strikes you is that there is a machine, ticket machine and everything. But I think these are some things which are common. I think standardization of these things made a lot of difference. It, everyone knows where to look for it. Setting up processing plant and continuity of the service. We have plants, but we don't continue. I think this is what the Apex body may really have to look into. If one plant doesn't operate, can we have an alternative plant? And is there a provision for that that does not sustain? There are many obstacles. We have the political wing, we have the IS, IS officers wing, and we have citizens group. I think we need to work together to have something common because these all three never come together. That's frustrating. And I think there the systems are working because the things, facilities are in operation. How they manage it, it's a big challenge. I mean, uh, I, I really feel, I think one of the reasons is also segregation. I think also the standard of services is even the, the operating procedures or the operation of the plants are very systematically done. Training and capacity building. I personally feel a lot of training and capacity building. We have a lot of private contractors coming into our uh, sector. But our, our engineer may not be that well aware about the contra uh, contractor system, may not be aware about the technologies. So when the private contract, he is smarter than our engineer, and that's how the or our staff starts feeling inferior. And he tends to give in. And this is my experience throughout, that when a private contractor is there, he is much well trained, a lot of knowledge and skill, which my staff doesn't. I, I, I've, I've seen people not going for training throughout their life. I have been taking training every five years on my own, I go and do something. So I think this is what is, if you really need the corporation employees, if you talk to my sweeper also, he will look down and he'll not look into your eyes because he doesn't have that confidence. That confidence only comes in when you have the knowledge and skills. And I think this is very important. This should be ongoing. It should not be one time, Pansal make training kar diya, baat khatam. That should not be the levy fee. I think fee, we really need to start with fees and incentive both people who are doing there are i know some alms uh, i think 60 alms priya had done a study and 60 alms were doing segregation out of which i think 35 40 are still continuing why can't we give incentive to such alms who are doing uh, segregation of waste and who are con converting their waste into makaran society is one of them why can't we give some incentive if the corporation is not going let's as in a corporate house or let's try and put this to the government that this is happening and this can continue Integrated approach is what I personally feel. Extended producer responsibility. I think this is what we really need to hit. That all the people really... Yes, do, do, they are doing it outside. Like Nest, Nescafe and Nestle are doing it over there, I saw. Challenges in Mumbai, I personally find continuity is a big challenge. How do you continue? And... How do you continue with the stakeholders? Because stakeholders go on changing. Today, there is someone else. The, I think we really need, I do not know how do you, I really, this is a big challenge. Lack of knowledge and capacity, as I feel. No incentive. I think we need, really need to think about fees and incentive both. 
availability of space because the biggest constraint is availability of space in the city of though we have given so many things many ngos have contributed to the new dp plan development plan that is happening but i really do not know how much will really come out and then you have a lot of land like with bpt has a lot of land um, salt pan has a lot of land i think in every zone you'll find out some maybe except excluding city most of the lands i think this is what the apex committee okay all this what or we are not going to take your waste either you give land either you lease it out or you charge it for it but you need to have some common spaces zonally created if not at least zone maybe in two zone one space decentralized waste management will be easy because we'll save a lot on transportation integrated uh, implementation of extended producers this is a lot of uh, and again another problem is 53 percent population is slum in the city of mumbai that's one biggest challenge and i think for that uh, they say slum sanitation program is uh, very effective i say the day my nalas have no waste in it i will say it is very effective because the day i see no waste in my nalas i say the slums are not throwing the waste into the and i think uh, so much of money is being spent on that i i really need we really need to but i i personally feel it's easy to work with this because i have been working with alms and i have been working with the slum for toilet project i found working with slum projects give you more result once they trust you they can do a lot of things how to create sustainable political will that's the last thing i think uh, uh, don't waste the waste thank you